the Razorback cheerleaders, Razorback dance team and mascots, and the best band in college basketball, the Hog Wild Band. special time to be a Razorback. And you are here tonight to witness us introduce the 14th head coach in Razorback basketball history, Coach John Calipari. I know you're ready. Now we got a lot of people here I want to introduce before we get started. We've, we've got several dignitaries, several people that we are honored to be with us tonight. I'd like to ask our, Arkansas, our University of Arkansas Board of Trustees to stand as I call their names and we're going to recognize them. Tommy Boyer, Steve Cox, Ted Dickey, Kelly Eichler, Dr. Ed Fryer, Kevin Crass, Jeremy Wilson. 
We thank all of you for being here with us tonight. I wish all of you could see what I see right now. This is awesome to see all of you here tonight. Just, just a great evening, and it's going to be a lot of fun as we meet our new coach. We're very pleased to be joined tonight by our chancellor, Dr. Charles Robinson, and his wife, Renelda. If you've been to Razorback Games, thank you. If you've been to Razorback Games, you know Dr. Robinson is a regular. He's there quite often. We appreciate your leadership. We appreciate your support and certainly are grateful that, that you are here tonight. The uh, Chancellor's Strategic Operations Group is here tonight, and I'd like to invite you to stand, if you would. I know many of you are here. Thank you for your service. I'd also like to recognize our faculty athletic representative, Paul Adams. Paul, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Paul. Now we're going to hear from our vice chancellor and our director of athletics in just a moment, but I do want to introduce his wife, Jennifer, if she would stand and be recognized, please. Thank you, Jennifer. In a few moments, Coach Cow will officially join the ranks of some incredible Razorback head coaches here at the University of Arkansas. Now, some are on the road as we speak. They're not able to be with us tonight, but many of them are. Please hold your applause until I've recognized them all. Our head football coach, Sam Pittman, is here tonight. Our baseball coach, Dave Van Horn, is here. Our softball coach, Courtney Dyfel, is here tonight. Welcome, Coach Dyfel. Our soccer coach, Colby Hale, is here tonight. Our men's tennis coach, Jay Udwadia, is here tonight. Our women's track and field coach, Chris Johnson, is with us this evening. Our women's basketball coach, Mike Neighbors, is here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, your Razorback head coaches. I'd like to recognize many of our former players. We've got a lot of former players who are here tonight. I've got a list. I hope I have all of them. If some of you have come in and we don't call your name, please stand and we will recognize you nevertheless. Dr. Jim Counts, if you would stand as I call your name. Todd Day. Blake Eddins. Kamani Johnson. Ron Brewer, Sr. Coach Ronnie Brewer. Corey Beck. Joe Johnson. Tommy Boyer. Jimmy Dykes. Mike Young. John Inkscove. Joe Klein. Reggie Merritt. And Manny Watkins. If others have come in and I've not called your name, we're glad you're here tonight. We appreciate you, and this is your night, too. It's a proud day to be in Arkansas, isn't it? Tonight, we officially welcome Coach Calipari and his wife, Ellen, to the state of Arkansas. And at this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium, actually, I'd like you to welcome to the podium a man who has worked tirelessly to find our next leader. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Vice Chancellor, our Director of Athletics, Hunter Urichek.
All right, y'all sit down. <laughs> Chancellor Robinson, I think we made the right choice. Wow, you guys know that we're not playing Kentucky in basketball tonight, right? This is amazing, amazing. It is a, another great day to be an Arkansas Razorback. And as your director of athletics, I say that with great confidence tonight as I think about our number one ranked baseball team. Our number one ranked women's track and field team. Our number two ranked men's track and field team. Our eighth ranked women's golf program. Our 10th ranked gymnastics program that just advanced to the Elite Eight. Our 11th ranked men's golf team. Our 14th ranked softball team. In today's historic hiring of John Calipari as our head men's basketball coach. I look forward to introducing you to Coach Cal in a few minutes, but first I wanted to take the opportunity to recognize several people. First, I would like to recognize and thank Coach Eric Musselman, his wife and his wife Danielle. During the past five seasons, Coach Muss with Danielle by his side elevated our program back to one of national prominence and ensured that we were able to attract a Hall of Fame coach to take his place. I wanted to thank UA System President Dr. Don Bobbitt, our University Chancellor Charles Robinson, by the way, celebrating his birthday tonight. By the way, Chancellor, this was my birthday present to you, okay? <laughs> and of course, the University Assistant Board of Trustees for their support throughout this process. I wanted to specifically thank Board of Trustee member Ted Dickey, who represented the board and worked with me directly on this search. Uh, the Dickey family has been serving our state for generations, and I am appreciative of Ted's service to our university and to me personally during this process. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> also want to acknowledge our Senior Associate Athletic Director, Matt Trantham, for his assistance in the search process. Matt, I think he's backstage. <laughs> and a huge and special thank you to our Department of Athletics University Associate General Counsel Matt McCoy and Coach Cal's attorney Tom Mars, also a UA Law graduate, who worked together to get an agreement in place. Matt and Tom, thank you very much. Matt, right here. And I certainly want to thank my entire family, especially Jennifer and my youngest son, Brooks, who are here tonight. Brooks, stand up. There you go. And there are so many others who played a part, but I want to make sure I recognize two key people and their families who played a significant role in our ability to hire Coach Cal. I am deeply appreciative to Mr. John Tyson for serving as a conduit. I'm a chicken fried and cold beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right and the radio. process, John served as a conduit. He made an, an initial connection between myself and Coach Cal to talk about this opportunity. 
Coach Cal and John have been dear friends for years, and that personal relationship was an incredible resource for me to better understand Coach Cal and what might attract him to the University of Arkansas. But this commitment was far more than just making a connection. John Tyson and his family are from here in Northwest Arkansas. And Warren Stevens and his family from Central Arkansas joined forces together to make certain we could offer the type of package that would lure Coach Cal to Fayetteville. Each of these families understands how important this program is to the entire state. Their generosity helped galvanize their state this week with great anticipation of the future success of our Razorback basketball program. So thank you to John, John Randall, and Olivia Tyson who are able to join us tonight and to Warren, Harriet, Miles, John, and Laura Stevens for demonstrating that we are truly all one Razorback. And let me be clear, because there's a lot of rumors and misinformation out there. These two families have helped us set the table to make this historic hire possible. But I know their expectation and their hope is people across this state will join them and make sure we are able to continue to provide the tools that are needed, not only to have success in men's basketball, but the tools for us to continue to have the success we have enjoyed across our 19 sports programs. All right, that's the end of my thank yous. Now on to Coach Cal. So as I set out to find the next leader of our men's basketball program, I received a lot of advice. <laughs> some was solicited, some was unsolicited on what we needed or in who should be our next head coach. But I knew I wanted to find a proven winner. I wanted to find someone who would embrace the Arkansas embrace Arkansas and the opportunities to build on a rich tradition that includes 22 conference titles, 14 Sweet 16 appearances, 11 Elite Eight appearances, six Final Fours, and a 1994 NCAA championship. We needed to find a coach that understands the current environment of college athletics and how to recruit elite talent. We needed someone who can develop players for success at the college level and prepare them for success in the NBA. We needed someone who would bring national prestige to the University of Arkansas, and we needed someone to generate excitement around, among Razorback Nation. Check that box for sure, right? And finally, I wanted to find someone who shared my vision that this program could return to the Final Four and win a national championship. In the course of our great history, we have been blessed to have tremendous players and legendary coaches. From Eddie Sutton to Nolan Richardson, Arkansas has been the home to Hall of Fame coaches. Today, we add another Hall of Fame coach to that distinguished list a Naismith Hall of Fame coach and someone that recently was selected as the 2024 John R. Wooden Legends of Coaching recipient. I'm excited for us to, I'm excited for us to formally introduce Coach Cal to this state and the entire Razorback Nation. So without further ado, take it away, John George. Razorback fans, let's stand up and call those hogs. where it is about as loud as a building could get. You're not entertained! The loudest arena to start a game I've ever been in. Uh, this is a hard place. You don't come here expecting to win. Let me tell you that. The name, the brand, the identity that he brings to a program that has a storied, rich tradition, an outstanding fan base in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The big recruits will follow and winning will follow. You go to Kentucky. What made you go to Kentucky? Coach Gow. I love Kyle. I still talk to Kyle to this day. 
You came in, you earned everything he made you work. Playing for Cal was, that relationship lasts forever. John Calipari gets to go to a proud program with Final Four National Championship pedigree. With the first pick in the 2010 NBA Draft, the Washington Wizards select John Wall. The New Orleans Hornets select Anthony Davis. Julius Randle. Keldon Johnson. Devin Booker. Jamal Murray. De'Aaron Fox. Bam Adebayo. Jay Gilgis Alexander. Carl Anthony Town. From the University. That's a program that is built to win. Arkansas needed an adrenaline bill. John Calipari is going to give them that. And now, let's welcome to the court, joined by his wife, Ellen, the head coach of your Arkansas Razorbacks, John Calipari! They've been waiting for you. Welcome. I, I have never gotten that kind of greeting in this building. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you were probably in the building when they threw me out before the game ended. Walked through. We did win that game, though. But they walked out. <laughs> And you guys were throwing stuff at me then. I wasn't hearing any cheers. How did this happen? Walk us through this. Shoof. Where's my John Tyson? He did this <laughs> twice now. I need you to talk to my AD. Well, I'm in Phoenix. He's in Phoenix. What? Well, tell him to call me. I'll meet him tomorrow. You want me to? talk about Canada, we, I didn't know what, and we met. We, we only met about an hour and a half, maybe less than that. Part of it was talking about other people, and he said, now that you know this, and I know you think this is a great person, why not you? Why not me? Yeah, why not you? Huh. Now, from that meeting, I left and went west. We stayed in touch a little bit. I just want everybody to know here I didn't want anything out until after the national championship game that we were even talking because I didn't think it was fair for those two teams and those coaches and those players and those programs. Somebody here leaked it out, though. <laughs> I don't know who leaked it out, but someone did. But Hunter, we didn't speak about it because it wasn't fair for those teams. Um, I'll tell you what, what happened to me. We, we were out west, and um, we had a priest with us, a Catholic priest. He gave mass one morning in his room. And I said to him, Father, I've got to decide what I'm going to do here. One is Arkansas, the other is Kentucky. And he told me, go for an hour walk and have in your mind you're the Arkansas coach. And then on the way back, that you're the Kentucky coach and tell me you, you'll see what moves your heart and what you want to do. And I did that. And I'll be honest, when I thought about coming here and building this program and making it something special, it got me excited. I, I got to say this, though. Um, and again, in 2007, I met with Coach Broyles. 
and we talked. I was at Memphis at the time. And I've just got to tell you, there's a difference now than leaving a job back then. Back then, you had players that were there to play for you, to be with you, to help groom them to get ready for what their future was. And if you left, they were stuck there. They couldn't leave. They had to play for whoever the coach was. And John got mad at me. I said, I'm not leaving these kids. And it was Derrick Rose, Antonio Anderson, Chris Douglas Roberts, Joey Dorsey, Robert Dozier, Sean Taggart. I mean, we had a great group. But it wasn't about winning and losing. It was about leaving them. It happened to be at uh, Massachusetts with Marcus Camby. We lost to Eddie Sutton's Oklahoma State team in big country in the Elite Eight. He said, I'm going to stay, coach. I'm not ready. And I said, well, then I'm going to stay with you. There were a couple things that were happening for me. The next year, we go to the Final Four, lose to a Kentucky team. I think we got screwed, but that's another story. <laughs> and he says, I'm going to do this. And I went and said, you know what? I'm going to go too. And I went to the Nets. You know who I got to coach at the Nets? Joe Klein. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, he got me fired. But, <laughs> but they, they were saying, you traded for Joe Klein. No, he was in the trade. <laughs> but I got to tell you one story. So, and Joe will tell you this is true. So I trade for him. He walks into my office in the arena. We're getting ready to play a game. He says, uh, Coach, I'm Joe Klein. You just traded for me. I said, Joe, I don't have time to talk to you, so I'll see you after the game. He said, should I put a uniform on? And I said, yeah, but you're not going to get in. But go ahead, warm up and be around. You know what happens. My center gets in foul trouble. Another kid gets hurt. I look at Joe. He looks at me. I look at Joe. He looks at me. And I said, go in. We'll run floppy. Anybody that ever, Joe Johnson's here, you know, Ron, you know what floppy is. That's universal. Anybody can do it. Joe struggled with it, but anybody can do it. <laughs> so I said, go in. And I could tell you other stories. But he walked by me and stopped and turned back and said, I'm Joe Klein, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> and then went in the game. And I had an absolute, he and I have been friends since that time. He got me fired, but it was good <laughs> because I could get back to what I do best. I'm sorry, Joe, I had to do that. <laughs> it must have been hard to leave Kentucky. What was that like? It was, I mean, we'd been there 15 years, folks. 15 years. And great times, great achievements. 40 players to the NBA, 30 kids graduated. 30 kids graduated. I mean, um, I love that state. I love the governor. The people are the salt of the earth. They're generous, they're kind. They grew up kind of like we did. They grew up like we did. And my wife and I, Ellen, where are you, Ellen? Stand up. There you are. Stand up and you can see my wife. Now, you, from this point on, she is the princess. That's what she is. She's a princess. She, uh, I got it, I'm off point here, but she makes brownies at every birthday. She wants the players at the house all the time. If they're not there, why aren't they here? And it's been that way from UMass to Memphis. Joe, did anybody come to the house in the Nets? No. Yeah. <laughs> but, and in Kentucky. And she becomes their mom away from home. So she's a great lady, a great coach's wife. She's the best. And, and I got my son here, Brad. Brad played for me for three years at Kentucky, graduated, and he put his name in the portal. So he was the first coach's son that said, I'm out. 
<laughs> and he went and played at Detroit for Mike Davis and had a terrific career and has done good and uh, was at Vanderbilt with uh, Jerry Stackhouse last year and did a great job of coaching. Um, but Kentucky's the bluest of blue. There's only a few schools like that, and I hate to tell you, Arkansas is one of them. It is. But I, all, I, all I can tell you, we loved our time there. We gave every ounce of everything we had to that job that stayed in that school. So I walk away sad, but knowing no regrets. We left nothing on the table. There's not a whole lot more we could have tried to do. If you look around, that's all right, you can applaud, go ahead. Obviously, there are a lot of Razorback fans. You look around the building and see that. What do you know about Arkansas? What, what, what's attracted you to this place? Well, it started with Coach Broyles. I mean, who he was, what he stood for. Um, when I met him, I was kind of intimidated when I met him. And then, is Marsha Cohn here? Is she here? Where's Marsha? All right, there's Marsha. Her husband, David Cohen, ran a golf tournament up in Forest City, and coach would play in it. He had the biggest legs and could hit a golf ball, even later in his life would hit the, I'm like, well, how old is he hitting the ball that far? But he was the one that met with me and talked to me, and um, so it started there. I mean, I would tell you, Coach Sutton, for some reason, kind of took me under his wing, and I have no idea. I just saw Steven, um, and we talked about it. I was like the last person to talk to him before he passed away. And I wanted to help him in the Hall of Fame earlier than they did, but he did get to hear that he was inducted in the Hall of Fame before he passed, which was a great thing. <laughs> I, see, I see Ron Brewer, Sidney Moncrief, you have, you know, Marvin Delft. He did it with Arkansas players. And how he did it in Barnhill, I have no idea. <laughs> but what he did here was the basis of what this became. And then Coach Richardson, he and I talked this morning. And Hunter will tell you, and John, I, one thing I ask, I want to know what Coach Richardson thinks of me taking this job. I need to know. And he says... And he and I talked today. Um, I'm going to send out to all of you a poster that's in my home office on the wall. I forgot it was there. It was behind me. And one of my staff said, look at that. Was, any, was anyone here at the 1994 game in Springfield, the Hall of Fame game? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was UMass in Arkansas the year after they won the national title. That year they went to the championship game. It's a poster of Coach Richardson. He looked at it. He said, that don't look like me. It does look like him. He's, he's, he's in his seat looking mean. Have me screaming. You have Corliss in it. Lou Rowe. What was the score of that game, by the way? A lot to a little. <laughs> okay. It was 114 to like 80, but that's all right. <laughs> It was in Springfield. But I think Corey Beck's here. Where's Corey? Corey played on that team. Um, Scotty Thurman, you know, the shots he made. I mean, come on. And it wasn't just who he coached. It's how he coached and how they changed the game to that point of we're coming after you. 40 minutes of hell, this is what we're doing. And the excitement in this building, it was hard to win a game if you were an opponent in here because you knew they're coming at you, teeth and feet, here they come. Um, I will tell you that he challenged his kids, but Corey, you gotta say, but he cared. He challenged them, but he cared. Did he hold you accountable? He held you accountable twice, right? Like once in the same time, never then but he cared about him. 
And in my memory of all that, Muss here five years. You got to know, Muss did a heck of a job here now. <laughs> Two in lead eights. He got this thing back on track, the Sweet 16. And again, you know, the, the opportunity to follow all that. And again, you could say, well, rebuild. Yeah, there may not be a roster. I got to put a roster together. No, you're laughing. That's not funny. I just, I just met with the team. There were three guys in there. And they were in the portal. So we got, we got work to do. And, and the only thing that I want to tell you is I'm not that guy that has a magic wand. That's not who I am. I'm the grinder that comes every day. And when you watch my team at the beginning of the year to the end, you say, wow, they got better. Individual players got better. They become a better team to put them in the best position. So, Finally, we've, we've watched you coach. We've watched your teams play. Tell us about you. Tell us about Coach Cal away from all this. Well, as a player, I was small, but I was slow. So, <laughs> um, I'm a gatherer. I'm, you know, I see uh, Dakari's brother down there. How's mom doing? You tell her I asked for, okay? Um, I bring people together. It's what I've always tried to do. Um, we get this thing going and we get this thing done. I want thousands of people to say, without me, this doesn't happen. Thousands. Not just one, two, five, not my staff. It was everybody came together and say, without me, none of this happens. I look at trying to create that love affair, a love affair between this program and this campus, this program and this state. I know this program's important to the state. All these programs are important to the state. And, uh, I got to tell you, so you understand, my parents, my dad worked in the mill in Western PA, and then he was a baggage handler. Worked till the age of 70, still looking strong at 91. If he's thrown, you know. My mom worked in the cafeteria at the junior high school. She had the white suit and sold the ice cream. We grew up Friday to Friday. You guys know what Friday, some of you young people don't know what Friday to Friday is. You're getting a paycheck and you're making it till the next Friday. Thursday is a tough day. It's how I grew up, but you know what? No credit cards, layaway, all the stuff. I wouldn't want to grow up any other way. You knew you had to work or you did not eat. And I say I'm a grinder. Um, that's what I am. I, look. I told my son today, I don't know why you look at, I, I'm telling you, my dad was a baggage handler, my mom worked there, I wasn't a great player. Please, I am just, my friends call me Johnny, Johnny Calipari. I'm not that guy that, you know, it's me bringing everybody together, bringing a staff together, gathering people, getting a team to understand how you have to work. You ready for this? Together, not work by yourself. You do it together. And, and then having a dream and a burning desire to compete for championships. Why am I here? That's why I'm here. And, and let me just say one, one more thing. Um, I'm always going to be a player's first coach. I'm sorry. It's about the players. I know for some reason, people think you can't really be a coach that wants to win if you're about the players. And I, no, you can do both. 
You can be, every decision I will make will be, are, is this the best decision for these guys? Not me as a staff, not, is it the best decision for them? When we're doing things, how we're doing things. You saw my team this year, we played totally different. Why? It was the best way for that team to play. We couldn't guard as well as we needed to, but we could really score. But it was how they had to play. And all I can tell you is I won't change that. It does change recruiting because of this transfer portal. You can't have as many freshmen as you usually have. You have your group of freshmen, you have a group of returning players, and you have a couple transfers that can impact it. Sometimes they're the, the alpha dog, that guy coming in. But even those guys would come here for one reason. How do you make me better, coach? I want to go to the next level. Can you help me? If I see a player that I don't think I can help, I'm being honest, I probably won't. Not that he's not a good player. I don't want to use some young man and say, yeah, you're going to set screens and dive on the floor. No. How do I help him get better? That is what my job is, to prepare them for life after basketball, to tell them how they create joy in their life. Do something for somebody else, and you'll figure out how you create joy in your life. The one thing Coach Riley, Pat Riley, said to me, the best compliment, Cal, I can give you is your, team, your players come in this league, and they're all good teammates. Think about that. For me as a coach, that was the best compliment I can get. Yeah, they're in that league. They're getting second deals. They're doing all this stuff. Yet, they're great teammates. That's what I want to have, the base of what we're doing here, the culture of what we're trying to do here. Ladies and gentlemen, he's our coach now, Coach John Calipari. Coach, come on up. I want to go down and say hello to the coaches real quick. I hope they didn't do this to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks. And you won. What was that score today? Congrats. Coach, I can't wait to work with you. Nice to see you. Coach, this is my coach. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap it up, Coach Calipari is going to be going and conducting his first press conference as the Razorback head coach. He's also going to be flying to Los Angeles tomorrow to receive the John R. Wooden Award for Legends of Coaching. So we certainly congratulate him for that. Again, we welcome his wonderful wife, Ellen, son, Brad. We thank all of you for being here tonight. Hunter Juracek, Jennifer, go Hogs! Thanks for being here. <laughs>